Zentangle friends, my name is Annie Reiser. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher and a certified botanical illustrator. And today I'd like to welcome you to my Lunchtime Tangle series for the new year, 2022. Happy late new year. I hope you all had wonderful holidays. And I wanted to do something a little different and show you where I create my YouTube videos. This is my home studio and this is my tangled wall that is tangled top to floor and all around um, surrounding my student area that I created before COVID to hold classes here. And I did a few and then COVID came. So I'm really excited that I can share my studio with you still uh, in this way. And I encourage you to subscribe to my website so that you can uh, see what other classes I'm teaching online or um, as video classes. And of course, you're all welcome to come to my classes up here in Estes Park. I am teaching with the Art Center of Estes Park, Colorado. That's where I live. Our little town of Estes Park is considered the gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. And that's where I get so much of my inspiration for my artwork. Today, I'm excited about sharing with you my own tangle, one of them. I, I have several that I have never really published. This one will be sort of considered published because I'm putting it out there. Um, it's called Eros, E-R-O-S, and I will share with you my tangle tag um, that has the step out. I'm going to put this on my student Facebook page, just Annie's Botangle alumni. And um, here you can take a snapshot of the, the step out and um, add it to your archives if you like it. Uh, this is a project that I designed um, for a February class that I'm teaching this February. It's um, a tangled pillow box, much like those pillow boxes that we did with Rick and Maria's um, project in 12 Days of Christmas this last um, December. So it's made of two zendalas that you put together and they be become their own little box. So um, I decided to create my own tangle besides a heart. I wanted to do this um, eros. Eros is nothing more than an anagram for the word rose. And the roses I was inspired by were the ones I saw carved in stone on altars in the churches there, um, in castles, on columns. It kind of reminds me of those, and that's, that was my main inspiration for Eros. Eros is also um, the mischievous god of love, and it is another term for Cupid, so you know uh, Eros in that way. I am going to get my setup here and be back in a minute and show you how to tangle Eros. At the time that I was working up this tangle, I was also working on my Celtic cable tangle that um, is also one of my YouTube demonstrations. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty messy. It's not even in my sketchbook. I sometimes just sit down at the TV while my husband's watching the news and I have a piece of paper on, um, on my lap desk and I just start playing around. So this is, this is how I developed that tangle. I thought it would be kind of interesting for you to see. One thing I noticed is um, when I was doing my sample workup, which is this, I noticed that the petals, as you can see around here, are pretty evenly spaced. That is, they, they're all a concentric circle about the same width from the center, from that bud area. And then when I went back and looked at my original workup, I purposely wanted to show a little bit of perspective on this rose, so I made the petals here at the top a little bit closer in to that circle area. So um, that's a great variation, right? So here it is without that kind of perspective, which looks really pretty and it's fine, it's a variation. And here it is how I actually originally meant for it to be. And um, so let's go ahead and work today, I'm going to be working on a tan tile, which is just nothing more than a piece of um, 
toned tan Strathmore paper. It's 80 pound and it's um, just cut into a three and a half by three and a half inch square like we do with our Zentangle tiles. And I um, obviously this would be beautiful on a Renaissance tile as well. But I, I really like the way this paper takes the General's white charcoal. I just love um, how that looks. So that's what we're using today. So today I'm just going to use a 01 black micron pen from Sakura and we're going to go for it. Our first step is we're going to make a spiral kind of like a print top and I'm going to spiral it three times and then I'll taper off the end. Three. So that's forming the center of our bud. And now I'm going to increase the size of that bud, but I'm going to also do that a bit off center. So using this as the top, I'm going to just make another circle. But as you can see, there's a little more space on here. There's a little more width than here and none up here. We're actually touching the top of the spiral. Okay, and then um, we're gonna make kind of an opening of our bud so that it looks like those petals are spiraling outward by making these little triangular sections. It's just a little triangle all the way around that last ring. And then to form our petals, we're gonna do- Sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm back now. I was just interrupted by a phone call. So uh, let's see if I can pick up where I was at. So now we're on our petals. Here's our bud and we're gonna create our petals very much in the same way that some of you know the, um, the tangle pattern called double zinnia. And we make those floral um, tips in a very similar way. Double zinnia and also the um, tangle henna, henna drum. So I'm going to remember to go a little bit closer to my bud at the top. So I'm going to start there. And then I'm just going to continue around making these like little double waves. So it looked like something like this. And then we're going to divide our petals up into sections. And I'm gonna do that by finding where there's an arc or a dip. And I'm going to begin here and draw a curved line to the center. And the reason, here's another one. I'll turn it so you can see. Here's a, the dip, so it's like the top of the hill. So you see how that's created kind of one petal with a double and it doesn't have to be double. The petals can be um, varied. They don't have to be exactly the same, all of them. It could be a single one. Uh, here you can see, I just have a single one here. Here's a double. Most of them are doubles, but um, don't worry about that. The important thing is, is to have the curved line so that you get some dimension. And then we're going to take that, those lines that are hitting the center bud, and we're going to make a little bit of weight, line weight. Like that. Um, the other thing that I like to weight is my spiral in the begin in the middle. So I'm just going to put a little bit of line waiting on that. Just gives it a little bit more dimension. And then um, there's a couple ways that we can do our shading. You can actually shade with graphite. You can also use eyelash strokes or um, hatch strokes to create a shaded effect. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do some eyelash strokes around the whole center of the bud. Now 
making some kind of reach that upper section of the, the petal and then some shorter ones. And that is basically the pattern arrows. Now, you can also use some hatch lines and do the same thing on the bottom of the bulbous bulb or bud here. Um, but this one's kind of small and I don't think it really needs it. I think um, when I go to shade with my graphite, that will, that will be enough. So, this is a really fun pattern to make clusters of, kind of like a little whole bouquet of roses. And the, the beautiful thing about doing that is, of course, that compositional element that's so great, and that's called overlap. So I'm going to do another one here. One, two, three. I'm going to wait that. my circle to make my bud. This one's a little bit more centered and then I'm going to make those little triangular shapes. My petals. Curved lines. Weighted line. And some eyelash stroke. And then maybe one more to give us our three. One, two, three spirals and taper off. Notice when I make the eyelash stroke that I'm placing my pen down and then pulling it out and lifting at the same time so that it becomes kind of light and feathery towards the end of the stroke. Looking like an eyelash. So you can't have a cluster of, uh, pet of roses without some kind of leaf and um, I like to do my own leaf that I call spike which is nothing more than like this long spike and then a leaf spade like shape and then I just do these veins off the midrib that are also curved Let's do another one. One, two, 
I almost forgot was I do like to weight these ends a little bit, little triangles. Almost makes it seem to have a serrated edge, which is very much like a real rose leaf. The other thing that I like to wait, if you're going to do a cluster like this, do you see how um, this is getting a little hard to read? So, oops, I forgot some eyelashes. So let's just add a little bit of line weight where there's an overlap, which is kind of like natural shading. See how that lifts that one right up? Same here. And then you can add more down here. I like also to do toodles. Let's do a toodles. Nice pointy top. Dark centers. Draw behind. Pretend like you know what's happening back there. And then of course you can loosen that up with some little perfs and some little fescues. I'm a little bit fescue crazy. You can make your fescues curly. They can be just more straight. And grow off the back of each other. A few perfs. And then another fun um, way to loosen these bouquets up is to use the Zentangle pattern called Blossom. Just do a few so you can see. I like little chicken feet. Kind of reminds me of baby's breath. Okay, so now we are left with just needing to shade. I think I like the orientation like this the best. This is where I would probably put my chop. Oh, I didn't finish this one. Just to show you how you can also shade this bulbous area you can do a few little eyelash strokes, kind of in a curve, curving around the sphere, like this. You can also use stipple. I use stipple on this one, where you just do your little dots until you get the desired saturation. Okay, so let's shade. I've got my Tombow 2B pencil, and I'm going to shade around the center and a little bit in between where these petals meet. It doesn't have to be on every one because when we blend with our tortillon, we can drag some of that graphite up. So I like to drag my graphite almost up to these points, leaving a little bit of space between the edge of the petal, and it creates this illusion of an undulating petal.
Down here, I would absolutely add graphite to delineate that rose from this one. Really will lift them up and off of each other. And you can also add some here if you don't do your hatching or your stipples, just to give that a more spherical shape. And you can shade the spirals a little bit if you want. That could be overkill. I'm not gonna show you how to shade the rest of that because that would be a different lesson, but I will show you how I take my uh, General's white charcoal pencil and like to add some highlights here. And then, uh, as we know, when we use white charcoal um, and need to blend, we want to get a clean tortillon that has not been blending the, the uh, graphite. Otherwise, it's going to contaminate your pretty whites. So, there you have arrows. Hope you enjoy this tangle as much as I do. I can see lots of uses for it, and especially on my new little um, Valentine project. Have fun with this project. I hope to see you next time. Please remember to subscribe and check out my website. So I, I forgot to show you some other examples that I made for my little arrows. Um, here's my sketchbook, and this is kind of a fun, prod, uh, fun way to explore with it. Is just to do like a garland of the roses, and this is just with a gold jelly roll pen. And here you can see it's really important to have that shading as um, the pen. I didn't finish everything here yet. This was just something I did. Um, pretty quick on the fly. So there's that one. And then this is kind of a fun one. So it's very delicate, very sweet. It started off like this, just um, a little circle. It's like two and a half inches across. And um, I filled the whole circle with the, the rose in gold jelly roll. I also, also um, created a rim around the entire thing. And then I took my uh, generals, uh, um, colored pencils and the charcoal ones and just use them to accent the shading um, that's that russet colored one and then there was the blue I thought blue would be kind of fun so I'll leave you with these inspirations and hope you show me some of your beautiful works on my student Facebook page Annie's Botangle alumni thanks again that's it for today's Tangle. Thanks for joining me. If you like these lunchtime tutorials, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also invite you to check out my website for classes that I have scheduled or to purchase my Tangle tags for your favorite step outs. That's bowtangle.net. I'm leaving you with some other links too. Zentangle.com, where you can learn more about the Zentangle method from its founders, Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas. You can also visit their store there for a multitude of Zentangle paper tiles, tools, books, and kits. Tanglepatterns.com is that site I talk about where you can explore hundreds of tangle patterns, read about them, and get the step out, which is basically the deconstruction of the pattern. And finally, if you'd like to share your beautiful results with me and my student community, please join Annie's Botangle Alumni Facebook page. We're a private group where we inspire each other with our work and offer tips and useful information about art and Zentangle.